Hello my friends and welcome back to the You Can Do TV channel. In this video, we will learn together the manufacturing process of turbines and generators, as well as the construction of hydroelectric power plants. The seamless rolled ring process is a manufacturing process for producing rings with a wide range of dimensions and materials. The process starts with strict quality control of the incoming material, followed by computer-aided design and forging techniques to produce the desired ring shape. Once the material is selected and qualified, it is cut into an appropriate size, and then the forging process begins. In the forging process, the metal is heated and then pressed into a predetermined shape. The forging process is closely monitored to maintain precise temperature control, to ensure proper forging ratios, and to maintain the shape and consistency of the ring blank. After the forging process, the ring blank undergoes ring rolling, where the blank is rolled into a ring shape on a CNC ring rolling machine. After the ring is rolled, it undergoes heat treatment to improve its mechanical properties. Throughout the manufacturing process, quality control measures should be in place to ensure that the stay ring meets the required specifications. This includes inspections of the raw materials, monitoring of the machining and heat treatment processes, and testing of the finished product. The stay ring was machined to the desired shape and dimensions. This was done using a variety of techniques, including CNC machining, milling, and drilling. The machining process was carefully monitored to ensure that the stay ring meets the required tolerances and specifications. This is Francis Turbine stay ring for an 8.5 MW Francis Turbine. It is a critical component that provides support to the turbine blades and maintains the alignment of the runner assembly. It is typically made of high-strength steel and is designed to withstand the high centrifugal forces and hydraulic pressures that are present during the turbine's operation. The stay ring was treated with a protective coating to prevent corrosion and improve its longevity. Common surface treatments include electroplating, anodizing, and powder coating. The stay ring is usually located at the upstream end of the turbine runner and is bolted to the turbine casing. It is designed to support the turbine blades and to prevent them from flexing or vibrating excessively during operation. The stay ring is also responsible for maintaining the proper spacing between the turbine blades, which is critical for maintaining the efficiency and performance of the turbine. The production of a Francis runner is a complex process that requires a high level of precision and expertise. The first step in the process is to create a 3D model of the runner using specialized software. This model is then used to create a pattern that is used to make a mold for the runner. Once the mold has been created, the next step is to pour molten metal into it. The type of metal used will depend on the specific requirements of the runner, but typically, a high-strength alloy is used to ensure durability and longevity. After the metal has cooled and solidified, the runner is removed from the mold and the finishing process begins. This typically involves grinding, polishing, and balancing the runner to ensure it meets the required specifications. In Global Hydro's facility, with 7-axis CNC machining center, the machining of complex geometries in a single setup is possible. Depending on the diameter and material, milling work can take up to 400 hours. The high-quality forged stainless steel monoblocks are polished by hand and heat-treated before they are dynamically balanced according to ISO 1940 standards. 
After production, the turbine undergoes a pressure test to guarantee quality. The customer can witness the quality of the turbine during an on-site pressure test, which is performed according to an internally optimized version of the European Pressure Equipment Directive. The fabrication and assembly of an 8.5 MW Francis turbine at EBCO Industries Limited is a complex and intricate process that requires careful attention to detail and precision manufacturing techniques. EBCO Industries Limited is a leading manufacturer of hydroelectric turbines, and the company has a wealth of experience in designing and fabricating turbines for a range of applications. The fabrication process of a Francis turbine at EBCO Industries Limited typically begins with the design phase, where engineers work closely with clients to understand their specific needs and requirements. The design phase involves creating 3D models of the turbine, which are then used to create detailed manufacturing plans. The next phase of the process involves the actual fabrication of the turbine components. The fabrication process is divided into several stages, each of which is carried out in a dedicated manufacturing facility. The first stage involves the fabrication of the turbine's casing, which is typically made of high-strength steel. The casing is fabricated using computer-controlled cutting machines, which ensure precise cuts and accurate dimensions. Once the casing is complete, the manufacturing process moves on to the fabrication of the turbine's runner. After the casing and runner have been fabricated, the next phase of the process involves the assembly of the turbine. The first stage of the assembly process involves the installation of the turbine's main components. This typically begins with the installation of the runner onto the shaft. The runner is the heart of the turbine, and it is responsible for converting the energy of the water into rotational motion. The runner is carefully installed onto the shaft and secured with nuts and bolts. Once the runner is in place, the shaft is attached to the turbine's main bearings. The main bearings are large, heavy-duty components that support the weight of the turbine and allow it to rotate freely. The bearings are carefully installed onto the casing and bolted into place. With the runner and shaft in place, the next stage of the assembly process involves the installation of the casing. The casing is the outer shell of the turbine and is typically made of high-strength steel. The casing is carefully lowered onto the assembly and aligned with the shaft and bearings. Once the casing is in place, it is bolted securely to the bearings and to the foundation. The final stage of the assembly process involves the installation of the turbine's auxiliary systems. Once all of the auxiliary systems are installed, the turbine is ready for testing. The turbine is subjected to a series of tests to ensure that it meets the required specifications and operates correctly. These tests include vibration analysis, pressure testing, and performance testing. Once the turbine has passed these tests, it is commissioned and made ready for operation. In this section, we will visit the TES factory, a leading European manufacturer of synchronous and asynchronous generators and motors, industrial automation, drives and components. Here, we will explore each process in relation to the production of generators, laminations, 
in the production of electric machines, laminations are used to create the core of the machine. The core is made up of thin layers of steel laminations that are stacked together and insulated from one another. The laminations reduce eddy current losses and improve the magnetic properties of the core. Welding. Welding is used in the production of electric machines to join different components of the machine together. For example, welding is used to join the laminations of the core together, or to attach the end plates to the stator or rotor. Tool making. T tool making is an important part of the production of electric machines, as specialized tools are required to create the various components of the machine. Machining. The process of machining involves the use of cutting tools to shape, finish, and refine the various components of the machine, such as the stator, rotor, and core. In the production of TES generators and motors, machining is used to create precise and accurate components that meet the required specifications. The components are machined to tight tolerances to ensure that they fit together properly and operate efficiently. Machining also helps to improve the surface finish of the components, which can affect the performance of the machine. The machining process involves a range of cutting tools, such as drills, lathes, milling machines, and grinders. These tools are used to remove material from the workpiece, shape it into the desired form, and create the required features and dimensions. The tools are selected based on the material being machined, the required finish, and the complexity of the component. Machining checkup. Machining checkup is the process of checking the accuracy of the various components of the machine after they have been machined. This is important to ensure that the components fit together correctly and that the machine operates efficiently. Winding and assembly. Winding and assembly refer to the process of winding the wire around the stator or rotor and then assembling the various components of the machine together. This is a critical part of the production process as it determines the performance of the machine. test field. Once the machine has been assembled, it must be tested to ensure that it meets the required specifications. 
This involves running the machine through a series of tests to measure its performance under various conditions. Paintwork. Paintwork is the final step in the production of electric machines. It involves painting the machine to protect it from corrosion and to improve its aesthetic appearance. A Pelton runner is a type of hydraulic turbine used in hydroelectric power plants to convert the energy of falling water into mechanical energy. The runner consists of a disc-shaped rotor with a series of cups or buckets arranged around its circumference. Water from a high-pressure source is directed through a nozzle onto the cups, causing the rotor to spin. The kinetic energy of the water is transferred to the runner, which in turn drives a generator to produce electricity. Pelton runners are named after Lester Allen Pelton, an American inventor who developed the design in the late 19th century. The Pelton runner is known for its high efficiency especially in high head applications where the water pressure is greater than 50 meters. The design allows for precise control of the water jet, which minimizes energy losses and maximizes the output of the turbine. The design of the Pelton runner has evolved over time, with advances in materials and manufacturing techniques allowing for greater precision and durability. Today, Pelton runners are typically made from high-quality stainless steel or other alloys and are manufactured using computer-controlled machining centers for precise shaping and balancing. At Global Hydro Energy's facility, the first step is to perform a meticulous quality check for material defects on the monoblock disc made of high-quality stainless chrome nickel steel. This ensures that only the best quality materials are used in the manufacturing process. After the quality check is complete, the first machining stage can begin, which is rough milling. This process involves using a computer-controlled 5-axis milling machine to shape the precise geometry of the Pelton runner as specified by the hydraulic engineering and design team. The rough milling process ensures that the highest possible efficiency is obtained from the finished product. The next step is finished milling, which involves the use of specialized tools to create a smooth finish on the Pelton runner. After finished milling, the runner goes through a grinding and polishing process to further refine its surface. Static and dynamic balancing are also critical steps in the manufacturing process. These ensure that the Pelton runner is perfectly balanced, which is essential for achieving high efficiency and reliability in operation. The Limmern Pump Storage Plant, owned by Axpo, is a massive energy storage facility located between the Lehman and Mutt Sea Lakes. Its purpose is to pump water from the lower Limmern Sea Lake to the Mutt Sea, which is located 630 meters higher, so it can be used to generate electricity when required. To store as much energy as possible, the height difference between the two lakes must be as large as possible. However, when the water flows down such a great height, it exerts tremendous pressure on the shaft walls. To cope with this pressure, the shafts are armored with a massive steel construction, known as hydraulic steel construction. In Thier C, the steel plates are rolled into pipes using a computer-controlled process. This means that the entire process is automated and controlled by a computer system, which ensures that the pipes are manufactured with a high degree of precision and consistency.
the computer system monitors and adjusts the rolling process in real time to ensure that the pipes meet the required specifications. The plates are fed into a rolling machine, where they are passed through a series of rollers that gradually bend and shape them into the desired shape. Once the pipes have been rolled, they are cut to the desired length and undergo further processing, such as welding or coating. The finished pipes must be precise to the millimeter and must withstand the enormous water pressure in the pressure shafts. Therefore, each weld joint is tested multiple times and all parameters, such as welding current and temperature, are documented. Once manufactured, the pipes are transported to the site, where they are installed in the pressure shafts. To do this, they are transported by train and then by cable car to the site, where they are placed in a sluice chamber. From there, they are lowered through the pressure shafts to their final installation location. The Limern pump storage plant is being constructed at the highest elevation in Europe, and one of the central components of this project is a massive dam wall. The plant is located in Bastera, which is an excellent location for a pump storage facility due to the relatively small Mutton and Lehman dams located close to each other but with a significant height difference. To increase the plant's storage capacity for efficient operation, the new dam wall will triple the existing capacity. This new structure is over a kilometer long and will take three summers to construct, since it cannot be supported by two steep mountain slopes like an arch dam. Instead, it has a triangular cross section with a broad base and a large mass to hold the pressure of the water. A lot of material is required for the dam, and a specially built road to transport materials to the site, due to its high altitude. The dam wall mainly consists of excavated material from the caverns, which is transported using a cableway and deposited on the mountain. Over 20,000 cable car rides are necessary for material transportation alone. The excavated material is sorted and crushed to the required sizes in the processing plant before being sent to the concrete factory. The concrete is automatically mixed and used for the construction of the dam. The dam wall comprises 68 individual blocks, each 15 meters wide. The blocks were built in alternating order, with the walls serving as molds for subsequent layers. The blocks are interlocked through openings in the side walls, and the site was prepared by removing two meters of soil to reveal the solid rock beneath it. The blocks were built in three meter stages, and each stage had six 50 centimeters thick layers. Each layer was compacted using vibrators, and the time between layer applications could not exceed two hours to ensure a perfect bond. The large stages took up to 12 hours to complete, and the surface was roughened, using water under high pressure to ensure a perfect bond. A walkway runs through the entire length of the dam wall to allow for maintenance and inspection. The tallest blocks in the dam are equivalent to 10-story buildings, and they were constructed in 12 stages. The upper stages were particularly challenging due to the limited space and unpredictable weather conditions, which sometimes caused visibility problems. Nevertheless, construction work continued around the clock to meet the project's tight schedule, even in difficult weather conditions.
The Limmern Pump Storage Plant is a key project for Axpo, a Swiss energy company, and it is intended to contribute to the stability of the Swiss and European electricity grids. The plant is located in the high mountains, and it consists of an underground pump storage facility that pumps water from the Limmern Sea back to the Mutt Sea, which is 630 meters higher. The new facility has two turbines and pump units with a capacity of 1,000 megawatts each, and it takes advantage of the height difference between the two lakes. The construction site is accessible only by road and rail, and the installation site is at the end of a small country road. All the necessary machinery, building materials, and personnel have to be transported up the mountain by cable car. Due to limited capacity, all transportation has to be precisely planned. The access tunnel was built to provide access to the caverns inside the facility, which were excavated in phases from top to bottom. The machine cavern and the transformer cavern are secured with rock bolts and mesh. The machine cavern is 150 meters long and 50 meters high, and had to be excavated from solid rock, with some areas removed mechanically, and the majority with explosives. All the excavation material was transported out of the mountain. In early 2012, the excavation of the machine cavern was completed, and the internal work could begin. The schedule was tight, and work was carried out at several locations simultaneously. The suction pipes for the pump turbines were already installed in the foundations, while the side walls were being concreted. The vault, which was previously self-supporting, was supported by a closed ring to withstand the pressure of the mountain. By the end of 2013, the caverns were sufficiently completed to allow for the installation of the technical equipment. The two definitive turbines were assembled and lifted into place, and preparations were made in the shafts to accommodate the machine groups. The foundations for the machine groups were built on top of the now embedded suction pipes. In total, over 80,000 cubic meters of concrete were used to build the caverns enough to construct approximately 700 single-family homes. To connect the facility to the power grid, high-voltage cables were laid through the access tunnel and to a substation 17 kilometers away. A new 380 kilovolt overhead power line was built in the Intel Valley, and 53 new transmission towers were constructed to support it. Central SBB Vernias, also known as Vernias Power Plant, is a hydroelectric power station located in the canton of Valais, Switzerland. The power plant was commissioned in 1945 and is owned and operated by Swiss Federal Railways, SBB.
The power station is situated on the River Laborne, a tributary of the Rhone River, and has a total installed capacity of 240 megawatts. The power station consists of two Francis turbine units, each with a capacity of 120 megawatts, in 2018. The power station underwent a major renovation project, which included the repair of the upper stator, fitting of the rotating diodes, and complete renewal of the control command. The repair of the upper stator was necessary due to wear and tear, which had caused cracks and damages to the stator. The fitting of the rotating diodes involved the installation of new diodes, which are an essential component of the power station. The renewal of the control command was carried out to ensure that the power station's control system was up to date and could effectively monitor and control the power generation process. The control command system is responsible for monitoring and controlling the flow of water to the turbines, as well as regulating the speed and output of the turbines. The reassembly of Group 2, following the completion of the renovation project, involved the installation and testing of the repaired upper stator and new rotating diodes, as well as the integration of the updated control command system. This process ensured that the power station was fully operational and able to generate electricity at its maximum capacity.